What's up painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. Today we're gonna do a quick little acrylic painting of this guy right behind me right here. This is a beach landscape. I believe I was referencing one of my own photographs from Tampa, Florida. So we have the lovely Gulf of Mexico here in this painting. This is a less than 30 minutes in real time painting tutorial so you can pick up on some color usage for painting shallow water scenes and maybe some brush stroke techniques. Uh, I don't go into too much detail on this one as you can see, but still have some things you can learn from this one and it's a nice fun one to practice if you ever go to the beach and you bring your paints, you'll have a little bit of an idea in your head of what to look for and uh, what colors you need to pack and all that stuff. So without further ado, let's get started with this tutorial. All right, we're using acrylic paints today and our colors are cerulean blue, sap green, emerald green, mid green, apricot, white, titanium, a uh, titanium white. Uh, next is our blue, which is ultramarine blue. We have phthalo blue next to it. We have violet, black, lemon yellow, pink, burnt umber, and that is it. I'm not sure if I'll need every single one of these colors but I have them there just in case. Okay, to get started, we're mixing that cerulean blue, or you could also use a sky blue with white, and that is gonna be our base color for the sky. We have a nice, clear, sunny day in this painting. We don't have any clouds, so we're keeping it nice and simple, just mixing white with that sky blue color. I am using back and forth brush strokes to get that on the canvas. The brush I'm using here is about a half inch thick flat tipped brush. So it's letting me get a nice even coating of paint onto the canvas. After I got my sky filled in, next I take some of my phthalo blue and some of my emerald green. And this emerald green is very important. You wanna definitely use a cool green here. So if you have emerald green or phthalo green, you should be fine. I do not recommend using sap green for the ocean. That's just too warm of a green. So, uh, you know, think about your, your green and see if it's a warm or a cool shade of green. And if you don't have a cool shade, then you might need to pick up a new green paint tube. <laughs> and I do have all of these materials in my description. You can order the paints from my Amazon affiliates account. I recommend for the acrylic paint sets to use the Galleria acrylics um, and those are linked in the description. So I'm taking that phthalo blue with my emerald green mixture. It's mostly phthalo blue here and I'm just making a nice straight line with my best abilities uh, while holding the the canvas from an angle and trying not to get in front of the camera too much. Sometimes my lines get crooked when I do that, but it looks like it worked out here. And I just get that straight line, try to make it nice and straight. You can use a piece of tape here too. If you just put a flat piece of tape on the canvas after your blue paint for the sky has dried, then you can just make a nice perfect straight line. You don't have to worry about it, but I just try to eyeball it. And once we got that on there, we start adding more emerald green to our phthalo blue and adding hints of white as well. And more and more white and emerald green as you get closer and closer to the shoreline. That emerald green is that nice like Caribbean blue, like turquoise water that you see. And again, I'm just using back and forth brush strokes, trying to get a nice, even coating of paint, covering up all of the white spots. And I believe I used the same paintbrush for the entire painting. If you want, you're welcome to use more than one paintbrush. I was just, you know, being quick with this one and not focusing on the details and just focusing on the color and the shapes, I guess you could say, uh, or like trying to create that sense of depth in a landscape. So I wasn't focusing on the details, so I did not use more than one brush, but you're welcome to do so if you'd like. 
All right, as we started to move farther down, we're getting closer and closer to the shoreline. Now some of this water is starting to reflect the colors in the sky. So we're getting some of that sky blue, some ultramarine blue mixed with white, and that's what I put down there. The next layer moving forward, we have so we have waves in the water, right? And the waves are not perfectly, it's not perfectly flat. The waves are creating some, like almost like topography, like we have a little bit of uh, a slope where the light is reflect, the light of the water is reflecting the sky. And then we'll have the next slope coming up where it's reflecting the more of the emerald color. So that's kind of what I had there. I had the emerald and the sky color and then the more of the emerald color it's just the way that the, the waves are moving and the light that they're reflecting off of the surface. We have like a hint of a little, little wave starting to form back there too. So I added a little bit of a wave there. I'm adding some shadows here in the spot where the sky is reflected. We still have some deep turquoise shadows. I mix a little bit of my lemon yellow in with that emerald green and white and that gives me a little bit more of a warm green that you see a little bit when the sunlight is hitting the waves. Now here I'm taking more of my ultramarine blue with white and I'm just plopping that right on top of my existing paint layers in specific spots where the sky colors are reflected on top of the water. And now we've made it to the really shallow part where the water is only several inches to only one inch deep. It's really shallow here. And we're starting to pick up some of the colors in the sand. So we're starting to get more purple. We definitely have apricot in there, hints of brown. And there's a little bit of a shadow on the back end of this wave right before the water comes to that super shallow spot there may have been a little dip you know how you're at the beach and sometimes you're walking out and there's like a little dip where the water uh gets like a foot deep and there's like a little like <laughs> i'm trying to show you with my hands right now but you can't see there's like a little dip and the sand goes down like a foot and then the water gets deeper i think that's what was going on here because there is that deep shadow like right behind the really really shallow water area so i'm thinking that's what i was getting in my photo all right now we're working back in the really shallow water our purples are starting to be visible so whenever you have wet sand and you're taking a photo or you're painting a scene that you're seeing in nature in daytime the wet sand has purples and browns in it and dry sand has more apricot yellow white red and you know those warmer colors unless you have pure quartz sand then it's still gonna look cold maybe like a light blue but this sand isn't pure quartz so we, it's not just pure white uh, so we did have a little bit of warm colored minerals in the sand which makes the sand a warmer color when it's dry but here the sand is wet so we have more purples and browns showing up so as you can you know just taking a quick overlook here we have our sky blue then we have our thalo blue at the deep ocean start to add some of our emerald green or if you have thalo green you could add that and then getting closer and closer, we start to include elements of the sky blue again, ultramarine blue, and then closest to the shore, we have purple, brown, apricot, and white. So it's just a really nice transition of color. The more you paint, the more you start to recognize all of these colors that you're seeing. So even though we do have a lot of cool colors in this, we do have a lot of colors, not just your blue and your water and your blue and your sky and brown in the sand. So here I'm just starting to build up some of the details in the closer portion where the water's really shallow. We have a bit of a highlight there where there's some apricot and white. 
a little bit of that lemon yellow mixed in. And I'm just working on blending that in, adding hints of my white with a little bit of lemon yellow and a little bit of that blue, just warming up this wave in the background here. The light is hitting that wave so that the crest of the wave has a shadow, the bottom of the wave has a shadow, but that middle point there where the water is rising up, we have a highlight. Then adding some more little waves in the background, more subtle, just to give a little more movement to the painting. Now I'm taking my phthalo blue with a hint of ultramarine blue. And we're starting to build up the shadow that is right at the edge of that really shallow section of the water. This is that little drop off. I guess I'll just call this the drop off. <laughs> it's only a one foot drop off. And then I just soften that down by adding a little bit of white and then blending that back in. Here I took a little bit of pink, the colors I already had on my brush, added a hint of white. And we're taking some more white, some apricot, and again building up that highlight right when we're getting to the shallow section. There is a wave breaking right here, but it's not like a full rolling over wave. It's more like it's hitting that drop off point and there's some turbulence. <laughs> it's not like a full crested wave that you would see. The Gulf of Mexico is very calm, so we don't get a lot of huge waves. Now I'm starting to add some shadows. This is ultramarine blue mixed with burnt umber, and these shadows, and it looks like there's a hint of violet in there too. And these shadows are just the shadow on the sand under the breaking waves and the breaking, um, the suds of bubbles and water above it. So it's creating these little, and there's also a little bit of drainage features in there too, where like, you know how the iron, like the dark pieces in the sand start to like, drain back into the water because they're they have a different density than the other minerals so like they like kind of form those little lines that's kind of what else i'm painting there <laughs> and i'm just at this point we have most of the painting down i'm just adding some detail and building up some highlights and some shadows to like further bring this to life without going too crazy into detail and spending too much time on it. So I've got some little highlights here where the bubbles are coming back to the water. Got our point where the waves are breaking. This is basically pure white. Maybe there's a hint of ultramarine blue in there. And another thing to think about is you have your foreground here, but the left side versus the right side, one of those sides is going to be farther away from you. And in this case, the right side is farther away from us. So as the, the wave is being painted here, you need all of your features on the right side to be smaller and a little closer together because they're farther away. And we want to give that, uh, that distance feel. So by making, the waves on the right side like a little bit smaller and closer together it's showing that the left side is closer to us again i'm building up that shadow right behind the drop off mixing my green with white Adding a couple more little shadows in there. And then going back again at the drop off point where our wave is kind of breaking and we have some more little highlights in there. A couple more little highlights on the back end of the drop off just from little ripples in the water. And 
And then we're taking a little more apricot with white, starting to blend that in. I'm trying to tie together this really shallow uh, section in the foreground with the stuff in the background and trying, I'm trying not to make such a dramatic change between the drop off and the stuff behind the drop off. I'm trying to make everything still tie in together so that it doesn't feel like there's a diagonal separating the painting. It feels more like it's a wave breaking and flowing into the foreground area. When you add highlights in the background, make sure you're holding your brush in a way so that you can make those lines more fine and a little closer together so that it looks like they are farther off into the distance. For these highlights here, this is where the light from the, sky, the skylight is being reflected again. So we have a little bit of phthalo blue, or sorry, a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed in with the white. And I'm just lightly holding the brush and letting it move back and forth all over just to create that kind of like sudsy look of the waves just breaking. Or not the waves breaking, but the little bubbles making their way back on top of the surface of the water. Starting to touch up some of the shadows in the back because I felt like it was a little overdone with the highlights. It's all about finding balance in your painting. If you feel like one section is way too bright and your eye is immediately drawn to that section, then maybe add some more shadows in there just to bring it back down, tone it down, and uh, you know, try to, whatever you want to be the focus of the painting, make sure that's your focus. Here I'm touching up that line, that diagonal line with, with our bubbles breaking right at the foreground and the lower right side. I end up touching up that bubble breaking spot to make the uh, bubble breaking line a little bit more fine uh, on the far right side just to push that farther back into the distance and I ended up making the bubbles in the lower left a little thicker just so we could pull that a little closer to us. Here I'm mixing some of that ultramarine blue with my white and I'm starting to make the diagonal lines there so it's pulling that back. And I'm realizing now as I'm uh, talking over this tutorial is that we do have a really nice play with diagonal lines here. If you look at the very bottom right side, we have that diagonal line going, starting in the left and going to the right. And then your eye moves up a little bit. And then we have some diagonal lines moving from the lower right up to the left. And then that brings you to our next diagonal line, which is crisscrossing that one. And then we get a flat line at the top, but it's nice. It does draw your attention from the foreground back into the background when you have nice diagonal lines like this in your painting. Still trying to find that balance between the shadows and the highlights, trying to push that section on the right side farther back into the distance. And we're gonna build up that highlight one more time where the waves are breaking right at the drop off area. This is just pure white. And I'm taking some of that green mixed with white and just again trying to tie in the really shallow portion with the water behind the drop off. Throwing some highlights in on the right side. This is just white, maybe with a hint of ultramarine blue.
adding some more shadows. Now I'm building up those shadows in the foreground again. Things in the foreground are going to have much more contrast than things in the far background. So we do have more purples and browns in the foreground and there is going to be more contrast between dark and light in the foreground as well. Doing another layer of cool blue here. There's blue, violet, uh, maybe a hint of brown, some white in there. It's probably ultramarine blue and brown with a little bit of purple and white. And we're just further building up those shadows. And those are shadows from the bubbles above them on the water. touching up that little soapy sud spot one more time, starting to pull some bubbles back into the distance where the wave is going right over the shore. And working on the texture in the sand, I put a few dots of brown in the sand where you can see some minerals in the lower right. Now I'm building up that shadow right behind the bubbles breaking, starting to add some black dots where we have shadows in that little bubble line. <laughs> and then I'm adding a hint more of that green and white, trying to bring that right side to balance again, trying to push it farther back with these little lines I'm adding. Without getting into too much detail, there definitely feels like there's a strong sense of movement in this painting. I don't know if it's the diagonal lines or the expressive brush strokes, but I'm definitely feeling the water moving. <laughs> and we're getting close to the end of this tutorial. I just do a couple minor touch-ups on the shadows here in the foreground. Building up that contrast just a little more. And voila! We have a completed painting! Thanks for following along guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions about this tutorial or you have recommendations for future painting tutorials you'd like to see, leave a comment below this video. If you like what you see, then subscribe to my channel. I do videos every Thursday. And you can post your version of this on your Instagram and tag me, The Painting Stoof, or put it on my Facebook page, The Painting Stoof. Looking forward to seeing your guys' paintings. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye!